Eric Klein. I'm one of the assistant directors of admission at Willamette. Um, I also am a California native. Um, I grew up in the Central Valley of California. Um, I did all of my schooling in Southern California, but I also have the pleasure of working with students across Southern California. So pretty much from Los Angeles all the way down to the Imperial Valley in San Diego area. Um, I was a first generation college student myself. And so this was a process that was really challenging for me to navigate. And so that's why I do a lot of what I do. I think you all need all the information that you need to make the best decision for yourselves. Uh, but with that, we can go ahead and get started with our presentation. So just to give you an overview of what we'll be chatting about this afternoon, I'll give you an overview of the institution, some historical context to give you all an understanding of what we're all about here at Willamette. We'll also dive into the academic experience of what you can expect from the liberal arts and what that means for your education at large, but also what that looks like at Willamette as well. We'll dive into life outside of the classroom as well. Lots of extracurricular and co-curricular activities for you all to get excited about and involved in, and that's certainly a big piece of the college experience as well. And then we'll wrap up with our application process and paying for college. Uh, I know that's a big piece of this puzzle, financing your uh, next the four years of college. And so we wanna make sure that that is uh, something that's affordable and something that's doable for you and your family as well. And then at the end, we'll have lots of time for questions and I'm happy to uh, pr provide any answers that I can. But let's go ahead and get started. So to give you some historical context to Willamette, we were founded in 1842. Uh, making us one of the oldest institutions in the West. That's actually 17 years before Oregon was a state. So uh, we have a long history in Oregon and in the Pacific Northwest as well. We are classified as a small four-year private liberal arts institution, uh, but we also have the support of three professional schools as well. We've got our College of Law, the Atkinson Graduate School of Management, and the Claremont School of Theology. So there's some uh, graduate and doctoral opportunities that you could participate in there as well, getting your master's or um, your doctorate program. Uh, the Claremont School of Theology was a small religious institution in Claremont, California, and they've recently partnered with us. So all of their courses will be taught on our campus starting this fall. We're also really proud of the uh, distinguish that we have from the colleges that change lives. Uh, that was a book written by Lauren Pope, who was an education editor for the New York Times. And he was really interested in identifying colleges and universities across the country that we, na we may not be as well known, but are still making really impactful uh, transformational changes in their students. And so we were really honored to be one of those uh, 40 colleges that changed lives. To give you some a numerical context, again, we are classified as a small institution. So there's about 1,800 undergraduate students. Um, that translates into an 11 to 1 student to faculty ratio. And your average class size is going to be around 17. Uh, we physically don't even have the space to hold a lecture larger than 50 people. So we couldn't even do it if we wanted to. And that really allows for a lot of your courses to be really discussion based. Um, you're going to be diving into the material with your peers and your faculty on a much more one-on-one -on -one basis than a large lecture hall type of setting. We also have 600 graduate students across those uh, different professional schools that I mentioned, so making a total student population of around 2,500. There's more than 50 different academic programs for you to choose from, from the natural sciences to uh, political science, the studio and performing arts, the humanities, so lots of different things to get excited about when it comes to academics at Willamette, or you have the ability to design your own as well. I was working with a student last year who was really interested in art therapy. That's not a program we have, but we have a really strong psychology program along with really robust visual and performing arts. So I recommended to that student, why don't you make your own major? And you can do that all the time with the help of our registrar because we want to make sure that you're meeting our general education requirements, of course, but we also want to make sure that the courses you were taking are what you're actually interested in and are going to help you uh, achieve your goals, whatever those may be post Willamette. 
uh, just about a few miles west of our campus, we also have a 305 acre forest called Xena. And that serves a few purposes for our students. For one, it's a living laboratory. So a lot of our students in biology and environmental science, uh, they'll head out there to do research or conduct some experiments. But it's also a recreation space as well. So students have the ability to explore and hike that space. And so it's a neat kind of natural extension to our campus. We also have a more than 50 year partnership with the Tokyo International University. Uh, back when they were founded uh, 54 years ago, they were really excited and wanted to form a partnership with a college or university on the west coast of the United States. So they sent a call out seeing if there was anyone interested in partnering and Willamette's the only one that responded. So we have a sister campus, the Tokyo International University of America that resides adjacent to our campus just on the east side of campus. So each year about 80 to 100 students from TIU will come to participate in our American Studies program on our campus. So those TIU students will be living in the resident halls with you. They'll be at the dining commons. They'll be in your classes as well. So that's a neat international experience that our students get to participate in and they don't even have to leave campus. But if you are interested in leaving campus and doing some study abroad opportunities, uh, that's a great piece and it enhances education in a wonderful way. So it's really easy for students to head over to TIU to do some studies. But there's also more than 65 different study abroad partnerships that we have as well on our campus. Uh, we have our Office of International Education at Willamette and their job is to make sure that it, lots of different partnerships with international education uh, institutions uh, have been acquired. And so we have groups that can study on six different continents. So you could literally take your education around the world with you. We're also steps away from Oregon's state capital. Salem is the capital of Oregon and our campus is right across the street from the capital, just 76 feet away. Uh, so that really offers a lot of opportunity to uh, intern or learn more about the legislative process and work alongside some of our policymakers. At any given time, about 80% of the interns at the state capitol are current Willamette students. So it's a really easy way for you to get involved if that's something uh, that you're interested in. And we wanted to include some uh, virtual pictures just to give you some context to our campus because uh, I think seeing it and being able to see yourself on campus is such a big piece of the college search process. So we didn't want to miss out on that. Um, this first picture showcases that proximity again to the Capitol. Uh, those red buildings that you're seeing in the foreground of the picture, that's one of our academic halls. And that gray marble building that you're seeing with the gold man on top, uh, that's our state capital. So again, right across the street, really easy for students to access and learn more about the legislative process. Uh, just behind where this picture was taken is Salem Health, which is Oregon's second largest hospital. So that offers a lot of opportunity for students who are interested in getting into the medical field. We've had students conduct some research there. We've had students become scribes. They've shadowed doctors. So lots of opportunity if uh, the medical field is of interest to you as well. And this shot is pretty much the heart of campus. Uh, that's the mill stream that runs through the center, pretty much dividing our campus in half. Uh, students will be hanging out on those Adirondack chairs that you're seeing, eating lunch or uh, just hanging out. Um, it's also a tradition to always be careful to be around the stream when it's your birthday because uh, you could find yourself pushed into the stream. That's one of the, the fun traditions we have on campus, uh, getting pushed into the stream uh, on your birthday. It hasn't happened to me yet, thankfully, but I always warn students to be wary of that. And then in the background, uh, that's our Hatfield Library uh, where all your studies and all your research can be done. On your right hand side of that picture, that's our University Commons. That's where a lot of the student building or offices are from student activities to our university chaplain and things like that. Um, it also houses our coffee shop, the Bistro. So lots of fun things happening over there as well. And then this final picture I think I really appreciate is it speaks to the heritage of our campus. 
being an institution that's over 150 years old, we have some of those original structures still on campus. So it has a, a neat flair to the campus, I think, but that's coupled with some really exciting state-of-the-art technology that we have as well from our spectrometer microscope that our natural science students get to use to the 3D printers that our physics students are utilizing, uh, creating really innovative things and products. So um, I think it's a great blend of heritage and innovation that you can get from a Willamette education. Uh, this is an overhead map shot of the city of Salem, uh, just to give you all some context of where we are located in the city. Uh, Salem's a town of about 140,000 people, so I think it's a pretty good size where students don't feel overwhelmed by the size of it. It's not too big, but it's also not too small either where students feel secluded or they don't have access to the things that they might be used to. As you can see where our Willamette seal is, it's right next to the downtown area of Salem. It's just about a five minute walk. Down there, there's lots of shops, there's restaurants, um, there's even a movie theater, a mall down there. So lots of different things for you to get excited about and really immerse yourself in uh, the Salem community. As you can see, just to the right of the, the seal, uh, there's an Amtrak station as well. So that can get you down to California. It also gets you up to Portland if you're wanting to explore uh, the big city. And we even have a regional airport in the city of Salem that has a shuttle that can get you up to the Portland airport as well. And that would be the airport to get a flight down to San Diego or Los Angeles, whichever airport works for you, if you need to get home. Uh, the city of Salem in context to the state, we're really about an hour from everything. So you could be to the coast in an hour at the west. Again, it's an hour up to the north to Portland. It's even an hour, less than an hour to the east and you could be hiking at Silver Falls in about 20 or 30 minutes. So there's lots of things to explore in and around Salem but lots of things to enjoy in the city itself as well. And that covers just some context to the institution, but let's dive into the academic experience as well and what you can expect uh, from your coursework. Uh, for us and what it means to be a liberal arts institution, uh, we, we really feel that your coursework is interdisciplinary, experiential, and student-centered. Uh, what I mean by that is you're not going to be uh, focused and required to hit a really rigid list of courses that you have to take for any of the majors that we offer. So you really get to take courses in things that you are interested in. The general education requirements we have at Willamette are really flexible. So it allows you to pick and choose courses from all the different disciplines that we have, and you'll still be getting your major, graduating on time, but it allows you to really focus on courses that you're actually interested in. Beyond the coursework that you will have, you're also required to either study abroad, participate in an internship, or conduct some of your own student research. So there's an additional element of your education beyond just the coursework that you're doing. So you're getting a little more experience, getting things that you can add to your resume and really help you in your future once you do move on from Willamette. I mentioned the opportunities at the Capitol and at our hospital nearby in terms of internships. But being so close to Portland, that offers a lot of opportunity as well. Uh, the Nike headquarters are in Beaverton, which is a suburb of Portland. Intel has a huge campus in Portland. So if you're interested in computer science, uh, they have lots of opportunity. So there's lots of things that you have access to um, when you're coming to Willamette. The only required course that we have on campus is called our College Colloquium. And that serves as your first year seminar. And so you'll be taking that course alongside about 13 or 14 other first year students. And you'll also have an upperclassman in that course who will be serving as your advisor. Um, they are a peer mentor as well. So they'll be facilitating the discussion that you'll have in your class, but they're also just there to help you with the transition into college and helping you get adjusted to the community that we have here at Willamette. And then that final piece of the colloquium is the faculty. Uh, they will be teaching you and guiding you through the material. Uh, one of the neat things about the colloquium course is the topic that has been chosen. It's chosen by the faculty, uh, but typically it's on something that is outside of their academic discipline that they typically teach. So this year we had a colloquium class on the history of the electric guitar. 
We had one on the knitting culture in America. Uh, we've even had one called Harry Potter and the Ethics of Difference. Uh, so they bring some variety, they bring some flair to those first year courses beyond just your introductory math or introductory English courses. We also have uh, that second bullet, the academic hearths. And those are the spaces that are really unique to Willamette where the faculty offices are housed in each of the academic departments. And they've been built in a way to really encourage community and discussion between students and faculty. So they're large common areas with the faculty offices around the perimeter and they've been designed by the students and have things that will meet your needs for whatever major you are interested in. So the English hearth, for example, has large couches and bookshelves for conversation and reading. Um, our physics hearth has large whiteboards in it where students are working on problems. And then if they ever come across a difficulty in whatever they're working on, they can just reach out to the faculty that are right across the hall. So it encourages that learning to even continue beyond the classroom. In terms of our graduate schools, we've got some great dual degree programs as well. And those are accelerated opportunities where you would be getting your undergraduate degree in three years instead of four. And then it would be an additional three to get your JD at our College of Law or an additional two to get your MBA at our School of Management. So it's knocking off a full year of schooling for those students, getting them into their careers that much faster. We also have some great new programs that we've started within the past two years. Uh, this fall, we're launching our business major, which we're really excited about for our undergraduate students. A neat piece of that program is some of the courses will actually be taught by our graduate faculty at the School of Management. So you'll be getting some graduate exposure even as a traditional undergrad. And then last year we started our major in public health and in data science as well. Both are very interdisciplinary. So they're pulling from various academic disciplines in terms of their coursework. And they really give you a, a comprehensive understanding of both of those topics. We've thrown in some fun facts for this presentation just to give you a more insight into our institution. Uh, the first one we have here is that Willamette's first graduate was actually a woman. Uh, we had women attending our School of Medicine as early as 1877, and Willamette's uh, one of the oldest co-educational institutions in the United States. And that's a hallmark that we have continued through Willamette's history and teaching is anyone and everyone who is interested in studying at our institution is more than welcome. Um, our motto is not unto ourselves, alone are we born. And I really interpret that as we as a community at Willamette aren't focused on our individual gains or successes, but it's really a communal experience where we're all helping each other to be successful. It's one of the things that I love about working at Willamette. Now let's dive into life outside of the classroom. Um, on average, your academic day will have about three to four classes. So it gives you a lot of time to be doing things beyond just your studies and being in class. Typically a Willamette student will be involved in about two to three things outside of the classroom. And there's lots of different things that you could be filling your time with. Uh, there's over a hundred clubs and organizations that we have on campus from our multicultural groups to our honor societies. We even have the Nerf Club on campus where students are taking over academic halls on the weekends and having Nerf wars. And so anything and everything that you were interested in, I'm sure there is a community and a network for you to tap into. And maybe there's an interest that we haven't formed an official club for. You can start your own club. All you need is yourself and a few other peers and a faculty advisor who will support your initiative and you can start up your own. That's really neat about Willamette is you can really make your experience um, your own. We have our bistro on campus and it is a full running student initiative. So the students are the ones making the drinks behind the counter. Uh, they are negotiating the contracts to get the supplies that they need for the running of the coffee shop. And it's fully their own initiative. So whatever it is that you are interested in, you could really make your experience your own. If you're interested in athletics, we have over 19 varsity sports for you to participate in, along with intramural and more uh, club sports as well. There's Greek life on campus. Again, lots of internships and some great uh, traditions that we have as well. I did wanna to mention too, kind of being in the Pacific Northwest, 
I think one of the hallmarks of this region of the country is the outdoors and getting outside exploring what we have naturally to offer. So we have a huge uh, campus recreation and outdoors program. And all of those excursions that our students are going on are student led. So it's student leaders who have gone through the programs themselves and are now wanting to lead students on their own adventures. So they'll take trips hiking, they'll go out white water rafting, uh, they'll even take trips up to the Portland Zoo. So lots of ways to get you out and about. Each weekend there's about two to three different excursions that are going on at any given time. And like I said, no matter what it is you're interested in, you can really make your experience your own. You can be breaking Guinness World Records on our campus. Uh, Willamette University proudly owns the record for the largest game of red light, green light. Uh, we had a student a few years ago who was wanting to make a unique impact on our campus. And this is the way that she went about doing it. So she teamed up with our campus recreation program at the time and brought some official uh, Guinness judges and timekeepers to make sure the whole thing was legitimate. But uh, we hold that record now. And it's a silly anecdote, but I think, again, it speaks to that idea of really making your college experience whatever it is that you want it to be. In terms of living on campus, our students are required to live on campus for their first two years. Uh, then when you become a junior, it is your choice. And we do have some very close by condos and apartments that uh, students will rent from time to time. If you do choose to remain on campus as a junior or senior, uh, the housing does get a little more apartment style as well. So you'll have a kitchen, you'll have space to uh, make meals for yourselves in your individual hall and things like that as well. Uh, the first year halls are a bit more traditional. We do have a picture of them in the presentation so you all get to see, but um, it'll typically be you and another individual in a double occupancy room. And then you'll have a shared bathroom at the end of the hall that you will share with your, hall, your hallmates. We do have two dining halls on campus. Uh, Gowdy Commons is the main eatery where the majority of campus will eat each day. Uh, one of the neat things about our dining services is the company that provides those services. Their main office and headquarters is in Salem. So their executive chefs live here. So they have the ability to change up the food very frequently. So it doesn't get too uh, monotonous or boring each, each week. And then we do have Kaneko Commons as well which is connected to the resident halls where our Tokyo International students reside as well. So this is the picture that I mentioned. This is an actual first year resident hall. So you all can see what it actually looks like to live at Willamette as a first year. And I think it's a pretty good size. You've got lots of space to sleep, to study. There's ample storage. Um, a nice part about the first year halls as well is there's large common areas as well where there's places to hang out and board games and foosball and things like that. But they also have very large kitchens there where you can make meals for you and your friends as well. So it's good, good living accommodations that you can expect from Willamette. And that wraps up our discussion about the experience and uh, what it's like to be a Willamette student. But I'm going to dive into the application process and paying for college as well. Again, this is a big piece of this puzzle, so I did not want to miss this opportunity to, to talk through it with all of you. Um, in terms of the application process for us, we are exclusively on the Common Application, which is a nationwide database of colleges and universities who are accepting the same application. So I would highly encourage you all to check out Common App online if you haven't done so already. And we're just one of those institutions that you can send off your application to. Um, there's no application fee for us. Uh, we're also a test optional institution. So you don't have to worry about including your test scores if you may feel they don't showcase who you are as an individual academically, or maybe you haven't had the ability to take them. Um, either way, you don't have to feel any pressure to include them if you don't want to. And there's no penalty either. So if you do choose to go the test optional route, there won't be an additional essay or anything else that we will need from you in terms of your application. There are a few deadlines to be mindful of as well. Um, our first round of applications come in uh, for our early decision, early action applicants. The difference between those two terms is our early decision applicants are telling us, I am applying to Willamette and if I am accepted, I will come to Willamette and I will turn down any other 
uh, positive admission decisions I receive from other institutions. If that's too big of a promise to make for you, feel free to just go early action and you'll get your answer at the same time. Uh, that deadline is November 15th and you can expect to receive your admission decision by the end of the year. If you need a little more time to work on your application, that's great too. But we have our regular decision deadline for those students and that's January 15th. If you do apply in that round, you can expect to receive your decision by the end of February. In terms of what we're needing from you for your application, pretty much what the Common App requires is all that we require. Uh, so we will need your high school and college transcripts. Uh, we'll need a counselor recommendation from your high school counselor. You can also include a teacher recommendation, uh, but it's not required either. And then we'll also need some paperwork from your high school in terms of school reports. If you do choose to include a teacher recommendation, I always advise including a core subject teacher. So an English, a math, or a science teacher, if you are wanting to include a teacher recommendation. In terms of what we're looking for when it comes to the application process, um, it really is a holistic review. As the admission counselor who works with students in the Southern California area, I would be your admission counselor as well. So I'm going to be the one that would be reading those applications. And so I wanted to talk a bit about what we look for in terms of the application. You'll have an opportunity to showcase all of your activities and what you were doing in, in the classroom and outside of the classroom. I always recommend including anything and everything that you were involved in from athletics to maybe community service. Maybe you don't have the ability to do those things because you have a part-time job or maybe you're taking care of a loved one at home, uh, absolutely include those types of things as well, because I think it really showcases who you are as an individual and what you are responsible for as a student. In terms of your essay, I'll be reading those as well, which is something I always look forward to each year. I do find that the common application prompts that they will give you can be a little broad. They're pretty vague. So I always recommend that you pick a more specific topic. I think it gives you a little more structure when it comes to writing, and it's also easier to read for the reader as well. And then your transcripts, I'm gonna be taking a look at those. We wanna make sure that you're academically prepared for the rigor that Willamette offers. And I'm wanting to see if you're challenging yourself with what your high school is offering. Maybe there's some AP courses or IB curriculum that you can uh, participate in, or maybe there's dual enrollment opportunities at a local community college. If those opportunities are available, I always encourage you to take advantage of them because it shows that you're challenging yourself and working with the rigor that you have. Even if those opportunities aren't available, that's okay too. We're never going to hold that against you. So it's always just in context to what your high school offers. So that's the application process and what we are looking for. Um, in terms of financial aid at Willamette, uh, there's three different components to each uh, financial aid package that we offer. Uh, the first is our merit-based aid. So all students are considered for those merit-based awards. Uh, this year, those range up to $27,000 a year, and they do renew for each of your four years as an undergraduate at Willamette. There's no additional application that you'll have to complete. You're automatically considered as an applicant to Willamette. And then if you're interested in any of the programs under that competitive uh, scholarship bullet, uh, that's another piece that you can add to your financial aid package. So we do have some competitive scholarships for students interested in the performing arts and studio arts. Uh, we have one for debate. Even some of our academic programs have some competitive scholarships for their STEM fields, for students interested in public health and environmental science as well. Those do require an additional application. So you'll have a separate application to complete for those. And there's some audi audition components or interview components that will be a part of that process. Uh, but those scholarships will also stack on top of any merit-based aid that you receive. And then finally, we do have some need-based aid as well. And that's calculated from the FAFSA, the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. So once you submit that to us, uh, we have some endowment money and some grants that we are able to provide on a need basis as well. I always recommend getting in that FAFSA information with your application because then when you receive your admission decision, 
you'll also have your financial aid package at the same time. So you'll get all the information that you need to make the best decision for yourselves. And this final slide, um, this is just a few numbers about financial aid uh, at Willamette. I think the, the top one's really important. Nearly everyone is getting some sort of financial aid from Willamette. So there's some sort of financial assistance that we can provide to nearly every student. And then that final number I think is really telling too. Uh, we worked with our alumni office to see where our graduates were in their career and how are they doing. And the majority of our mid-career uh, app graduates are doing really well in making a six-figure salary. So it's not only a quality education that you're receiving, but there's some weight and some success that comes with that within whatever field it is that you decide to end up on once you do complete and graduate from Willamette. And that completes the, the presentation. Um, this is all your time now. So if there's question that's, questions that you all have, I'm more than happy to answer them, but I hope this was informative and insightful to all of you. Um, I know I had a good time sharing as well. Eric, uh, we really wanna thank you. Uh, this is Todd Evangelist and I work here at the Imperial County Office of Education. And we're the ones who are hosting this higher ed week for I guess two weeks here. Uh, just if you're a student tuning in, you probably know that at the top of every hour, we have a new university uh, log on and, uh, and Mr. Klein here is from uh, Willamette, Willamette. I, I always have a hard time uh, with that, sorry. It's a toughie. Yeah, well, Willamette uh, uh, University in, uh, in Salem, Oregon. And uh, he's, sharing, he's been sharing for uh, the better part of, of uh, over a half hour or so. So if you just tuned in late, I uh, want to make mention to you that we are recording these sessions and they will be made available on our social media feeds and, in our, uh, and on our web pages. And most likely your high school counselors will be able to connect you with that. Uh, if you have a question, you wanted to do a follow up if you missed this session and you really are interested. And I think, uh, Eric, you're the only university that we're highlighting this, uh, this go around from the Pacific Northwest. And so my first question will start off with there. Uh, the Pacific Northwest is a little bit different, to say the least, from Southern California and even more so from our Imperial Valley, which is a desert community right down on the border. So some students maybe really like the desert, maybe that's why they live here, but some of them may be looking for a different climate or a different uh, area. Uh, so maybe just if you could tell us about what they would see when they live in, in, in a city like Salem, Oregon. Absolutely. I'm a California native myself and I spent the last 10 years in the Southern California area. So when I made the decision to move, this was something that was at the top of my list as well. Um, I will say the climate is a little different. So we do get more of the traditional four seasons that we have. Now we do have a rainy season from about November to March, uh, but it's nothing too crazy. Uh, this past year, we did, sometimes we'll get snow. Uh, this past year we didn't get any so it is a little chilly i will say it's chillier chillier than the imperial valley for sure uh, but we've got some really great springs and summers too so it's a pretty mild climate um, so something else that i think is important to to note i know what i loved one of the things i loved about southern california is the diversity that you get to experience from culture to cuisine all of those types of things um, i think it's a space that is not as diverse um, there's lots of folks from all different places, but I think it's something that I noticed just not as prominently as I do in Southern California. But in terms of the atmosphere as well, um, I know when I was in Southern California, it always felt like I was having to compete against my peers or my classmates or what have you. And I don't really feel that when I'm up here in the Pacific Northwest in Oregon. Um, it's a space where I find folks are just kind of doing their own thing, kind of working towards their own successes. And so that is something that I've really appreciated from uh, this community that I'm a part of now. That's good. Thanks, and, and great to know. A couple of students have chimed in on some very specific questions about do you have this major versus that major? And yeah. I know at your university you have a great website that lists all the different programs, and, and I know you highlighted many of them in your presentation. So I guess students can maybe go back and watch the recording or go to, uh, if they wanted information specifically, is it well, Matt, oh gosh, I'm, I'm, I'm having a mind blank on this. Well, Matt, well, Willamette. Yep. Willamette. Uh, there you University. go. So it's willamette.edu, uh, I'm assuming, uh, That's for correct. your webpage. And uh, students can get uh, uh, detailed information about the different programs and majors that you have 
uh, they can. If they go onto that home page, there's a button right at the top that says programs. If they click programs, they'll have all of them listed. Um, in terms of the big ones, I can touch on those really quickly for all the students here. Um, being in the capital, uh, our political science major is very big. It's called public policy, law and ethics. So it's pretty interdisciplinary and provides lots of different material for you to grasp. Um, economics is also pretty big at Willamette. The natural sciences, environmental science specifically, um, those are the big ones. Uh, we even have a pre-health track for students who are interested in going on to nursing or medical school. And that will team up the student with a pre-health advisor to make sure that they're taking all the prerequisites that they need to get into that next graduate step as well. Great, sounds good. One of the things that uh, perked my ear during your presentation was a couple things. One was that you guys use the Common App. So if students mm -hmm. who are seniors right now hopefully are familiar with that, but if they're not, uh, the Common App is obviously what it sounds. It's a very common application that a lot of universities use, so you guys use that. And then mm -hmm. the other thing that really perked my ear is that no application fee. So if a student is interested, uh, they can certainly be encouraged to apply to your university without any any for, fear of, of having to pay a lot of money for their application fee. There's a zero cost to that. Exactly. And uh, a couple other quick questions. Uh, and one of the things that I also noted that is that you're, since you're kind of the, the, the point person for, for this area, you might be one of the people reading some of these applications that students turned in. And so you went over in a great detail uh, about what you're looking for in the, in, uh, in, in students uh, for the university. Maybe just in a nutshell, maybe highlight one or two things that you're looking for uh, so students can have that in their mind when they're making their applications. Absolutely. Yeah, I will be the one reading the application and it is a really holistic process. So we're looking at each of those things. But I think Willamette is a place for students who have a love of learning and who are wanting to make a difference in their world. Uh, whatever it is that they are interested in studying or doing, uh, Willamette is providing really unique opportunities to get them access to the things that they need to be successful. Now, somebody obviously can apply as a freshman what about mm -hmm. transfer students if if they decide to stay home and go to a community college uh we have a great community college here in imperial county so if they decide to maybe stay here for a couple of years and transfer up do you guys accept uh transfer students we do so uh we're if you're wanting to go that route and you use your first two years to go the community college route that's great as well we have counseling staff who specifically work with transfers as well. We're all well versed in the process, but um, there would be a specific counselor who would just be working with you and support in terms of making sure all of your, your courses transfer over to our credit system and things like that. So um, that's absolutely an opportunity for students as well. Um, those students will typically come in in the springtime, so they don't come in as a traditional fall student. But even for undergraduates, we're trying to be as flexible as possible in terms of the current state of our world. And so if students right. are not looking for a fall start, even as traditional undergraduates, we're offering spring enrollment as well for those undergraduates as well, if they need a little more time for whatever the reason may be, but that's an option for them as well. Well, that's a good point to, to learn. So maybe just as a quick follow up to that. So if I'm a high school senior right now, and I'm applying to your university, you listed a slide that gave some dates, but come May, I'm a little hesitant about getting on a plane or, or getting mm -hmm. on a train to go up north. And, and maybe mm -hmm. I think if I can just wait another three months or six months, what would the process be like? Maybe that road hasn't been written quite yet, uh, but what would be your expected process for how that would happen? Yeah, each year we understand life happens. So even if things were normal or our old normal, uh, we do have a deferral process. Mm -hmm. So if something comes up, if you're needing tip, it used to be if you needed in another, another year, we could hold your admission decision and then you could apply it to this the next coming year. Uh, but we've shortened that time frame as well if you're just wanting another semester. Um, so typically that happens in the springtime as the admission counselor, we're always working with the students once we've uh, read their application and the decision has been released. So typically those conversations start um, in the early springtime. Wonderful, thank you, uh, Eric. Now, uh, we, as I mentioned, we are hosting uh, our higher ed week uh, throughout the whole uh, 
this week and then next week as well. And at the top of every hour, we have a new session coming up. So I think we have somebody lined up in a little bit, but uh, we would love to hear any uh, finalizing thoughts that you might have. And other, and other students may want to ask a quick question on the question and answer chat. We'll certainly leave that open for the remainder of this hour. Uh, but uh, Eric, if there's anything in summary that you'd like to mention, and then we'll look over to see if there's any other additional question and answers. Yeah, I think our location is something really exciting. We're in the Pacific Northwest so for those students who are looking for um, a change of educational experience. It really provides um, lots of exciting opportunity. And again, for those students who are looking for making a difference in their world and getting a really rigorous education that's going to provide them the success and the tools that they need, I think Willamette's a great place for, for you. Well, thank you so much, Eric, for, you know, introducing some of us to Willamette University and also for validating some things that some folks may have already known in researching your, your school. We're so grateful to have you for the first time ever at Imperial County Higher Education Week. We hope it's not the last. Um, we've, I've really enjoyed um, listening to your presentation. I learned some things about Salem that I may not have known. I've actually been there. Um, oh, good. It's, a, it's a really cool little downtown area. Um, and I'm, I'm happy to hear the, uh, seems like traveling, uh, you know, to come home to the San Diego airport or via train, I think I heard you say. Um, I think that's really important. I think sometimes as students are considering colleges and universities, that's one of the things that they consider is how close or how far um, mm -hmm. will I be from home or how long will a, uh, a, you know, how much is a flight? How long will a commute be? Um, to come home. And so I, I really appreciate that information, as well as the information about just, you know, the trees and, and all the things that are different um, in Oregon than they are for some of us here in the desert southwest. So absolutely. Um, I really appreciate that. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm sure uh, students will have questions for you. If we have any, we'll make sure to forward them your way. Excellent. Thank you so much, everyone. Hope you all have a good day. Thanks, Eric. Have a good one.